In this video, we're going to go over work order outs. So we'll start by clicking on the customer icon because once again, everything in Windfall is customer specific. We'll go into the customer. Now there are two ways to create outbound uh, work orders. So we'll go over the first way first by starting to go to the inventory tab in Windfall. We want to click on show all orders so we can see all of our inventory from all of our orders. So what we do first is we highlight the given inventory pieces we want to put on our outbound work order. <coughs> so you highlight the ones you want to put on. You can highlight as many as you want or as least as you want as you want. Also, you can select them in different orders. So once you select the pieces, you want to go on the outbound work order. You highlight them, right click and select add selected inventory to new work order. It says three line items, three total quantity requested, successfully added to work order 13W01. How the work orders are labeled is the year 13W0 for work order, and one just means it's the first work order created in the database. And then it follows in sequential order. So you say OK. Now, say you forgot to add one piece specifically. You can always go back in, highlight the piece you forgot, right click and add selected inventory to existing work order. Then from here, you can hit browse and select which order you want to assign that piece to. And also we have this add all option. If you have a quantity higher than one and you do not wish to add the entire quantity to the work order, you can uncheck add all and only add the quantity you want to add to that work order. You say OK and one line item successfully added to work order 13W01 and you say OK. So now you can go to the work order tab in Windfall because the work order tab is going to be where you're going to view all work orders whether they're in, out, or move. They're all under the work order tab under the customer. So here's our work order number. It's highlighted. So remember whatever you're highlighted on is what you're working with below. So I always work left to right and we're under the detail tab here we see that we're on 13W01. Here's the date and time created. This will also populate completed and printed will populate once you complete the work order and print it. You can assign a priority to this work order by hitting the browse button and select a priority. We all select urgent same day. Taken by who is creating this work order. So it's whoever is creating the work order. So I'll put Amy. Bill of lading number. If you have a bill of lading number, you can fill this out. Everything I'm going through here is all optional fields. Um, you do not have to fill them out. All you have to have are the line items. Everything else is um, optional. So if you have a bill of lading number, you can type that in. If you want to as assign an employee to the work order, you can. Um, by assigning employee, you hit the browse button and select from the employee list who you want to assign the work order to. You say OK and hit add and then employee name will show to the right. You can also assign multiple employees to the work order. Remember in our uh, windfall icon training, any modifications, changes or additions you want to make in windfall is all located under the global tab. So if you want to add priorities, employees or whatnot, you can do that through the global tab. This download scanner is checked because we're downloading the scanner or the work order to the scanner. This is an outbound work order. The warehouse code is required and you can assign a job number to this work order as well if you wish to. So it's yellow so we save. Then we move left to right and we click on line items. Our line items are already here because we added them from the inventory tab. So here's our line items. Report fields, what this functionality is, is it shows you all of the fields you that will display on the work order. What I suggest for the first time for any work order for a customer is to uncheck all and then just check the fields you want to display on the work order because if you leave them all checked, it'll display all of those and if they're blank then it just takes up more space on the page. So I'm just going to check the ones that are relevant to this customer that I want displayed. So anything during the setup that I captured through scanner prompts I want to check on my report fields. 
if I want to see the image, I can as um, as well. If you don't care about the image, don't check the box. And you can view the image by line item or view all images on last page. You also, if you want to view the locations they're located in, you check the locations box. And you can sort by quantity or sort, sort by first in. LIFO, FIFO. You can also show the top five locations, 10, 25, 20, or show all. Um, the reason we have that now is because we have the functionality to select from whichever location the piece may be in. For example, with articles, you could have article CH100 in 10 different locations in the warehouse. Um, prior to our new enhancement here, Windfall would automatically pick the first location. Now we've added the option that it'll list all the locations CH100 is located in with the quantity next to it, and you can then decide from which locations you want to pull the product to. As long as the product CH100 is in the location that you want to select from, you can select it from. But it no longer tells you you have to pull this piece from this location. It'll give you a list of all locations you can select from. Requested by, this is who it was requested by, on what date and what time, by whom this work order was requested by, their phone number, and then you can assign a cost center to the work order if you wish as well. So it's yellow, so we save. Delivered to, this is where the product is getting delivered to on the outbound work order. There are two ways, you can either enter in all this data right away, Customer hotel address city zip country contact information email phone number delivery date and time And it's yellow, so you save. Service codes, if you want to add any service codes to win, uh, the work order, you can. And remember, service codes, you must create them first in global. So you can hit Add and hit the service code for Dolly. And I want one Dolly at the rate of 40. 40. Also, on the Delivered to, you can either type in everything, or like I mentioned before, there's a second way. You can just browse. So if you go under Configuration, Other tab, there's this Work Order Delivery Information option here. If you consistently deliver to the same addresses, you can put these in prior to creating work orders, and this will save you some time for when you're putting in your delivery information. So you just hit Add, the Delivery Hotel Project, Deliver to Contact, the Phone Number, the address, city, and zip. Hit edit and submit. And you can have multiple addresses here. You can have as many as you want. So then when you're creating work orders, you can go back to delivery to browse and just select the, the address you want and it populates all the data for you. That way you don't have to type it in every time you create a work order. Also, we have comments and instructions. Any type of comments and instructions you want to put on the work order, you can. So if you want to put deliver to back or any type of comment, you can. So it's yellow, so we save. And once we've completed every data field and put in every piece of information that we need for our work order, we go back to the detail tab and print the work order. Now it's asking me sort line items by location tag. What that means is if you have a lot of line items on your work order, if you sort them by location, what it'll do is it'll group all the locations together so you don't have to run all over the warehouse back and forth. So for example, if you have FDOC, F1, F3, F4, 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 these pieces, it'll group all the F4s together so you don't go to F4, then F1, then F4, then F10. It'll put them all together. So I say yes, I want to do that, sort my, by location. So this is what the work order looks like. And as you can see, it's two pages. So it's for customer hotel. It's a warehouse work order. Remember, you can change the header in global if you want it to say, 
you know, your company or whatever you'd like to say on the top. Taken by Amy, the created date and time, the printed date and time. Here's the delivery information, where it's going, all the data. The delivery address, all the data that you entered. Any notes and instructions, who it's assigned to, the job number. Um, if I had captured weight, it would display weight here. Pallets, loose items, vaults, dumpsters, hours, and weight needed are all manually fields, fi uh, fields that you would fill out. Here's our service codes, and here's our outbound work order number, along with our line items. So it does line item one, quantity requested one, and here's all the data about the piece. Here's the tag number, the category, the attribute, the type, the PO, and where it's located at. So it's saying it's located in F02 with a quantity of one, and so on and so forth. You just do line by line to look and see where your inventory is and what product needs to be delivered. Also on the bottom, you can see the disclaimer, no longer liable. And you can also print this out and have them completed by time, date, in, and sign. And then you can scroll down and view the rest of your lines. You can also print this from here and print it out, or you can export it into a PDF and email it if you wish. And from there now, you hand it off to the warehouse person, and they are ready to scan out their inventory. So once the warehouse person receives the work order, they go on to their scanner. They log into their scanner. They select activity. They select inventory out because this is an out work order. They hit next. Now their first prompt is work order numbers. So now they scan this work order number here. Where is it going? Their options are third party carrier, bill of lading, customer location, customer pickup, disposal, miscellaneous, not found, or trailer. So they must pick a location out. So I'm gonna select bill of lading. Next. What's the bill of lading number it's going out on? So I, they type that in. Next. And now it wants to know what tag number are you scanning out. So now since you pulled all this product on the work order, you scan the corresponding tag number out. So the tag, first tag number I'm scanning out is 757-86578. So I would scan that tag. Now it's ready for the next one that goes out. So you scan the next tag on the work order that is ready to go out. Then you scan the next one that's ready to go out that's on the work order. And then you scan the final one. And the final one is here. Now, as you can see up at the top, it says count four. I've scanned out four pieces on uh, to this given work order. And as at the top, you see you're doing an inventory out, location out is bill of lading with this bill of lading number to this work order, and here's the last tag number that you scanned out against this work order. So you can double check and see the count was four. Yes, I look at my work order, I had four line items, so I scanned four line items out. You can also use the last scans options and look at the last four inventory pieces that you've scanned out to make sure that you've scanned them out. Also, you can check, just like an in, you can have review checked for review on to review each scan you scan out. It is faster not to have it checked, but when, when you're new and you're learning the scanner, review is a nice feature to have turned on so you can double check your work. Because like I said before, once it's complete on the scanner, you can't go back and fix it or modify it till it's in windfall. So if you were... And then just these other options, quantity count like ins. If you were doing a quantity count... On an in, you have to do a quantity count on an out. And a quantity count, again, is scanning articles in or out without tags. So that's what a quantity count is. The quantity prompt is when you're assigning a quantity to a tag. So if you check quantity prompt first, you can scan out the tag and say how many of those pieces assigned to the tag you're taking out. You can either scan prompt, quantity prompt and say how many you're taking out against that tag, or you can scan that tag as many times as is requested to scan out. So that's an inventory out. 
So once you're finished scanning the four pieces on your work order or how many allotted pieces are on your work order, you go back to main menu, dock your scanner, make sure it's connected to Windows Mobile Device Center or Microsoft Active Sync depending on what software you're using. And then you hit data transfer, start. Do you wish to delete these images after data transfer? If you want to keep your images on there, then you do not want to delete them. So just remember, you keep images on the scanner in case you want to assign that image again to another piece without having to re take the picture each time you scan in that product. And that's good for projects when you know that you're consistently having the same items come in again, in and uh, out again on different POs, but you just don't want to have to take the same image over and over again. So once that's complete, we can look in the bottom here at our transactions with problems. It says zero, zero, so that means all four of my transactions were good. So if you hit refresh grid in the work order tab, you notice that the work order is now processed out and no longer appears in the work order tab as something to select from. So when you scan a work order out of inventory, that means that you're scanning the pieces out of inventory and processing the work order. So if any time I need to re-pull up that work order, I can go into the work order tab, go to show closed, and view my closed and processed work order. And then I can print it again and see that, that all these line items, line item one, quantity requested one, quantity processed one. So I can see that my work order was processed and I can reprint this work order again for my records or to email a customer by exporting it to PDF or any other feature you would need. So consistently throughout Windfall, we remember we don't delete things. We archive them, process them, close them, inactivate them. So every tab has the feature to either show the open active ones, the closed ones, or show the open and closed. So once the work order is processed, it will no longer show in um, the work order tab as an active work order. And you'll notice down in the bottom right, it says work orders active zero because we do not have any active work orders. Today, we've created one work order and new web, we have zero. So that means we haven't had any work orders created on the web. So also, if we wanted to go back in inventory and view inventory not in the warehouse, we could see the pieces that we scanned out on that work order. So you can see this piece we know it's inventory not in warehouse and it's gray, so we know it's out. This piece came in on this date and time to this location, and this piece went out on this bill of lady number on this work order. So if you ever need to check anything, you can that way. And you can also edit grid filter and search for all the pieces that went out on a given work order. So that's one way to create a work order. The other way is from the work order tab. So you're on the work order tab and just like anything in Windfall, anytime you want to create something new, you hit the white page to add new and we work left to right again. So now we're on 13W02 because this is the second work order we, we've created in this database. So we work left to right again. And remember all these fields are optional, but the more information you have in these fields, the more you can utilize them. So I'm going to assign a priority taken by Amy, a bill of lading number, and it's yellow so I save. Then continuing working left to right, I go to my line item screen and see I don't have any line items because I hadn't added them from the inventory tab. I'm going to add them manually here. So what we do is we hit add line item. Then it says filter fields, select the filter criteria. You can either do no date sorting or you can sort by FIFO, first in, first out, or sort by LIFO, last in, first out. So we select the data we want to filter by. Maybe we want to filter by article number. Say OK. What article number do we want to filter by? We select what article number we want to filter by and hit find. So it says we have 11 desk lamps in our warehouse. Double click, and let's say we just want two. So I hit the number two, I hit the tab button, and then I hit add, 
And this next step is the most important. You must click Save Line Items. If you do not hit Save Line Items and you switch to another tab, your line items will disappear. Then if I want to create another or add another line item, I just hit Add Line Items again. Select Filter Criteria. I want to add Article Number. What article do I want to add? I'll add a mattress. Hit find. We have 10. I only want three. Hit the tab button. Add. Save line item. So you just continuously do that each time you want to add a piece to your inventory. Then we work left to right report fields. They're all set because once you set the report fields for the first work order, it remembers the report fields for every work order after. So we have our report field set. Requested by, what date and what time did this person request? Who requested it? Phone number. Assign a cost center if we'd like. It's yellow so we save. Delivered to, we can either manually enter all the data or we can browse to the delivered to place we um, deliver to address that we already created under the configuration tab, other. So it's yellow, so we save. If we want to add any service codes or any comments and instructions, we can. So once we're complete adding all of our data, we go back to the detail tab and just like the other work order, we hit print work order. Sort line items by location tag, yes. And here's our work order, warehouse work order. Now, as again, you can see that this line item is requesting two, and you can see this location, F02, has 11 in them. So we're only wanting two, and this one has, we only want three, and this location has 10. So on the scanner, this process is a little different because we don't have any tag numbers, as you can see. There's no inventory numbers. We're just using article numbers. So we forgot to check article number on here to view what it is. So we go back to report fields, and we check article numbers so it'll display on our work order. So then we go back to details, hit print work order. Yes. Now we can see. So now we print out this work order and hand it to our warehouse person. They log into the scanner and then they go pull their product in those locations that match all the data. The data has to match completely. All the UDFs have to match. The article has to match. Everything about the piece has to match in order to scan it out. Then we select select activity, inventory out, next. What work order? So they scan the work order number. Remember. You, you have less human error if you scan product instead of typing. Because sometimes we've seen people will type 13W0 instead of WO, and that'll end up in the transactions with problems because it was typed in incorrectly. So try to scan location, article tag, work order number, anything you can that has a barcode. Try to scan that, and it'll get rid of some human error. So we scan our work order number. We select our location out. Maybe we'll, this time we're choosing third-party carrier. Who's the third party carrier? I'll say UPS. Next. Now it's asking for inventory number. Well, since we don't have an inventory number and we have an article number, we have to do a quantity count. So you hit quantity count. What location is it you are you pulling this product from? Now it asks you that because remember articles can be in multiple locations. So it has to ask you which location are you pulling it from. So we put in our location. How many? Our, our work order says two, so we put in two. What customer? Because the same article number can be in multiple customers. We're choosing hotel. And what article number are we pulling out? You can either start typing it up here or scroll down. Desk lamp. Next. So that was the first one we scanned out. Now we do the next line item. It's, so we have to hit quantity count again because there's no tag number. From what location? F04. Next. How many? This one's asking for three, so we put in three. Next. From which customer? Hotel. Next. And what article number? In this case, it's a mattress, so M-T-R-S-S. -S. Mattress. Next. So now we're complete. 
And as you can see, our count is two. We have two line items, so we're good to go. So then when we're completed, we hit main menu, data transfer, start. No. Just remember when you're doing your data transfers in batch mode that you must be plugged into the docking station and connected through ActiveSync, our Windows Mobile Device Center, in order for it to do a correct data transfer. And you know the data transfer is complete when you're back at the login screen. So that's how you scan out product and scan out work orders. Remember, though, when you're doing an inventory out, you do not have to have work orders. There, um, <coughs> you can always go in to the scanner and turn off your work order prompts. You can bring in inventory, move inventory, and take out inventory without work orders, but we do have the functionality to assign pieces to work orders as well. So um, if you're doing an in or an out and don't have a work order, just skip over it on the scanner prompt. But if you do have one, you must enter it. And just remember, all work orders must be created prior to scanning any product out if you're going to use a work order. So if you're going to use one, you can't create it on the scanner. You have to create it in Windfall first. And that's under Setup, Prompts, if you don't want your scanner to prompt you for work orders if you choose not to use them. But it will always prompt you on the scanner for work orders if this is checked. But just remember to always create the work orders first if you just choose to use them. Any type of activity does not require work orders, but if you are using them, they must be created first. So once you're done with that, you can, we have two problems. Also, since we're, we're looking at this, you can go to the line items and you can manually take this product out. So if you go to the work order itself and it says quantity processed, you can click in quantity processed, hit the number two, hit the tab button, and it's saying that it's taking 2 at 11 from this location. And you can select the location out type and type that in here. Now, if you click OK, what it will do is it will process the line item as well as take the inventory out of Windfall. If you click Close, all it will do is process the line item and not take the inventory out of Windfall. So you always want to make sure that you click OK if you want to close the work order as well as take out the piece out of inventory. So we click OK. That line is processed. So then we click down in the next one, hit the number three, hit the tab button, and it's selecting from up here. It says it's taking one from here, one from here, and one from here. You can select the location out type, third party carrier, UPS. Click OK. So now I process that work order out, and now it no longer displays. So once again, you can show your closed work order and view your closed work orders. So that is outbound work orders. Show all, show open. Once again, if you have any questions on um, work orders or anything throughout any of the training videos, you can call our support line at 314-925-1547, or you can email us at support at assetcontrols.com, and we can help you with any questions that you may have. Windfall has lots of functionalities and processes that you can select from, so if you ever want to call us and talk out options to do uh, for your customer and which ones would be best based on their process, please give us a call and we can help walk you through that. So this concludes outbound work orders.